Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel for all you PC players. This one's going to be for you. I've been looking to buy a new graphics card and actually a whole new computer and I've realized that graphics cards right now are pretty unbearable and you can't really get them right now. So I've decided to take some matters into my own hands and try to do at least decent with what I got. And at this current time, I have a pretty decent graphics card RX 580. So long story short, I took matters into my own hands and I'm trying to overclock my computer. I realize it is very easy and I'm going to here to show it with you guys today everything that i learned from all the articles i read and everything along that lines i've really learned how to do this pretty well i've been testing with this for the past few days and i think i finally got it 100 percent down so if you guys are interested in that you literally only need to download two different applications and they're all msi applications so very reliable and they'll both be linked down below and that is msi combustor and msi afterburner other than that you just need to know a few key information points and i'm going to walk you guys through that step by step here today so with that out of the way, let's get right into the video. So open both of these. You should have them side by side at this point. And here is when we start overclocking. Just to get your expectations straight, this is not going to exceed anything above 10% FPS. The best thing that you could do if you overclock it perfectly, you might receive a 10% performance boost, which is somewhat substantial. So don't take that lightly. 10% is a pretty decent amount. Another guideline that we have to look at whenever we actually run this, we want our cards to have a limit on the heat. So come over here first. If you're on NVIDIA, I'm no scientist or anything, but I have read a lot of articles and it says NVIDIA, don't let your card reach over 80 degrees Celsius. AMD has a little bit more leniency and they say 90 degrees Celsius is safe for it. Anything above those heats will mess up your computer. So we'll have to turn up the fan speed or something or turn down the overclock. Either way, we'll sort that out. Just wanted you to know that before. So this is a screen where we're going to be changing stuff the most and then we'll be testing it on heaven benchmark. So the first thing we want to do is set our power limit on our fan and just turn this all the way up. You have this all the way up and then you can unlink this by clicking this and you can turn your temp down. So if you want yours to max out at 85, that's the hottest it could get, then that would be safe for you if you're on AMD. I always like going a little bit below what others say. So I stick with 85. My computer runs pretty hot. It's in a mini case, so it's tight and closed, isn't water cooled, nothing like that. It's just a standard computer with fans. So that's how I set mine up. Now, as for your core clock, this is the first thing that you're going to change. And before anything, let's run this. So you just have to run this and it's going to run this whole test for you. For me, it's going to perform a lot worse than it usually would because I have OBS, but we're going to run this, make sure it's stable. Obviously, it's going to be stable at core clock at just the default straight out of the factory type numbers. But as we get going, we're going to see if this becomes unstable. If we start lagging, now, obviously, if your computer crashes, that's very unstable. All you have to do is just hit this top left benchmark area and then you'll see that we start going through and you'll see your frames in the top right with what your graphics are currently rated at and the memory what it's currently set at so both of these are the defaults in my case and we'll get a frame report once this is done so go through this turn your settings all the way on ultra no reason not to 1920 by 1080 just set them at that standard and it'll, everything just needs to be the same every time so now once you're done you should get your scorecard you'll see some dropped frames you'll see your max frames and then you should just have an overall fps and your score if you ran the same thing as me you can compare it or if you have the same system as me you can compare it but i ran this at 1920 20 ultra and that's the only thing everything else off so just keep this one in mind you could even save it but for my case i'm just going to take a picture of it and then i could save it from there and it would get used to that you know it's about four minutes is what it takes now that you have your base core clock of whatever it is in my case 81.2 frames per second at a score of 2046 every time we do this we want to see improvement without seeing lag stutters crashes anything like that mine's going to be a little bit swayed because of course i'm recording this while i'm doing it on the same computer so mine's gonna have to be a little bit lower than it usually would be but it still should be the same for you if you're watching this video on the same computer I recommend maybe pulling it up on your phone to follow along on the next steps now very importantly from this next step you do void your warranty once you change this core clock and memory clock you void your warranty if you're under warranty so don't do anything stupid don't pull this all the way here if you burn out your GPU that's all your fault so everything at this point should be what you see on this screen either 80 or 85 or even 90 depending on your system System for your max temp slide your power limit for your fan all the way up and now core clock take your core clock your standard core clock that your computer has and I recommend you just bring this up by 5% so just take your number and then times that by 1.05 and you have 5% and this is a good place to start now it might need to go lower might need to go higher but it's a good place to start 5% higher than it is and it should get you broadly where you want to be beyond that we're gonna run this again we're gonna test it see how it does and then if it's doing good we bring 
bring it up 10 more points. If it's doing good again, bring it up 10 more points. You're going to get to a point where the benchmark either crashes or you just keep going until it starts stuttering and then you just bring it down like five, test again, and then bring it back down to that 10 mark. So in my case, the PC couldn't handle it. So I'm just going to reset it and go down to 1396. It's probably probable that yours might not handle it. I have OBS open and I'm recording my screen. So that's a big part of it. So keep that in mind. But once you want to reset it, just go down here, set it, and then hit this check mark, hit save, and then you should be good to go and keep on going over and over. And we're going to run through this. So the computer handled it just fine. I'm going to bump it up another 25. We're at 2050 at this point. So 1416, 2050 with my RX 580. And we're going to keep this going. I've only gained about three to four frames. And unfortunately, you guys are going to be able to do a lot more. So fortunately for you, but you guys will probably be able to clock yours a lot more up to that 5% that we were talking about on your core clock. Mine can't do it. And I think a lot of it has to do with the heat of the computer. It stalls it out, everything like that. The micro case does not help. That's the main thing. Once you click out of your thing and see your temps in the 80s, you're probably going to get hindered at least a little bit. So try to cool down your computer, get better fans, get something. So I've been testing this for like an hour at this point. I'm just going to say that this is where we end up. Okay. 88 frames. We could do much higher, I think, especially with cooler temps and stuff of that nature. Less bottlenecking there, but 88 frames per second from the previous 81. So, okay decent, I guess. And we improved. So now at this point, we've done two things mainly. So we've done all of our benchmarking so we can quit out of this application and then we'll head onto our desktop. And now we have our core clock completely set up. And now we have our memory clock completely set up. I think this memory clock can go a little bit higher, but I'm not too worried about that. If you guys want to spend hours and hours on this, then do that because it is worth it. If you guys are really trying to push your GPU a little bit more, I'm going to to tinker around with this later as we get going but this is basically the gist of it but now we want to test our cpu temps and the best way to do this is with a stress test which combustor is exactly that msi combustor 4 so you can come here and just hit the preset 1080 if you would like and you'll see this thing's just going to go through its thing and just watch it Make sure you, this temperature doesn't go too crazy. So this GPU temp is getting up into the 70, 75 area. We'll see how high it goes. The fan's at 100% at the moment. We are almost done. We're at 65%, but you really got to watch this number. I'm just hoping it doesn't go above 85 with my current setup. That's really my goal here. If it goes above 85, I'm going to have to slow things down a little bit, but it also just has something to do. If the GPU loads at 100, it's basically going to be whatever it is. Once again, you'll see if your computer crashes, then you're out of luck. And you need to restart this because you are going to crash. But just keep a look at this Celsius here. You want to see, make sure it's under what you set at the beginning, which should be under 80 or 90, depending on AMD or NVIDIA. Either way, those are the maxes for those cards. Don't go over just because it's one or two over. Don't think that's okay. Stuff will start melting up in your computer. You might start smelling some burning smells, but what's more likely to happen is your computer is going to have a lower lifespan. The lifespan is definitely going to decrease on it. So that's the main thing about going too hot the cooler, the better. So I'd let this thing just go for about like 10 minutes. See what your max heat gets to uh, frames per second. Doesn't really matter that much. As long as once you test on games, it's not stuttering like it is right here. Plus I'm recording a lot of things are going on right now and that's probably not helping at all. And I don't expect it to. I mean, the frames per second are terrible. Everything's pretty bad here. I'm just really worried about the temperature. We've already tested really the graphic side of it. We've tested everything else. Now I'm worried about the temps which we are getting into the 80s. I just want it to stay under 85 to 90. All right, we're all finished up. We should be at a point where we're comfortable with our temps. We're comfortable with our voltage. This is the first thing we do, and then we do the stress test. But we should be good at this point. Our temps are good. Everything else is good. Now there's just a few more things we could do. Go to the settings menu on the afterburner, and we are going to see all of this stuff right here. So we could do a few things here. If we have voltage issues or if we want to change anything here, voltage control is something that's a little more risky, and I'm not going to pretend like I really really understand voltage control that much, but this is the thing that has the best chance of frying your computer. So unless if you're experienced with this, I would avoid this. I'm just teaching you guys your first time ever overclocking. This is a great video for you because you've made your computer better without harming it in any way. If you want to do that though, hit unlock con voltage control and let it rip and go for it. But that is uh, definitely something I'm not going to tinker with in this video specifically. And as for people with AMD, there's a few things that you're able to see that uh, NVIDIA people will not 
not be able to see. So all of these things let you do a little bit more with AMD. You can actually extend official overclocking limits. So you can extend these bars and you have a few more settings that you could play around with here if you're on AMD. But other than that, uh, for everyone else, just make the, your updates. Definitely make these uh, automatic. So make it so it's not never. It needs to be one of these. Just make sure it's one of these so it actually checks for updates. Second thing you might want to do is start this with Windows. So when Windows opens, this also opens, which gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can actually be looking at. But other than that, we have now at least improved our frames a little bit. In my case, I didn't do it that hard, but we got eight FPS on the benchmark. Now I'll have to test it on other games as well. I, of course, will make this computer a little bit more precise and play with this probably for a little bit longer. And this might take you forever, for hours, whatever it is. Just keep tinkering around with these two settings until you get that perfect spot. And even with that, you might be playing a hard GPU intensive game. And after three or four hours, the computer just crashes. And most likely it's from this. So you're going to have to go back and reform this. So the stress test, while it does test the stress of it, even if you do 10 minutes, hours and hours, hours of gameplay might actually change that a little bit and you might crash again. So keep that in mind. If your computer crashes, it's not broken. Just restart the computer and go back to the screen, lower things at least a little bit down and go at it again. It's not any of your fault. There's no way for you to know that. Only playing a few hours of games will actually tell you that. So once you do that, you'll actually officially know what your max capability is for your graphics card without harming it. And as always, I hope this helped. If you guys want to do anything more advanced and learn about voltage, that's your next step. And I know it's hard to get a graphics card right now. So the best thing to do right now is actually probably to just make your graphics card better. It's kind of logical here. So if that's the way you did it, hopefully this improved your frames by at least a little bit, you know, 10 frames here and there. It actually does make a pretty substantial difference. I got about 9% increase in performance. I didn't get that 10% number, but I'm definitely going to get that 10% number when I mess around with these a little bit more, tinker them a few up and down. But think about it. Your graphics card is now 10% better or close, 5 to 10% better than it was when it started out right out of the box or when you started this video. So if you enjoyed this, please do leave a like. And also, if you want to improve your frames even further than this, check out my Windows optimization. That'll give you even a few more frames. So we could just keep optimizing your computer. And eventually, at some point, you're going to end up with 15 to 20% performance increases on your computer just by the things that we've taught you here today and other videos in the past and that is saving you a lot of money and it's improving your frames a lot so i hope you guys appreciate it if you did though please leave a like please subscribe get us to 100k we're a little bit away we're almost at 70 though so that's the next milestone let's get to 70k then 75 and we're going to be on our way to 100k by the end of 2021 so i appreciate it have a great day peace